welcome to New Game Plus. I'm Tim, I'm joined by Donald. How are you? I am feeling rather nostalgic. Everything old is new again. We've got, just look at, even from, we've got Guitar Hero, we've got Rock Band in 2015. Hell, we've even got Symphony of the Night and Banjo Kazooie once yes. again in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ 2015. <laughs> I'm particularly excited for Ukulele, yeah. which is the spiritual successor of the Banjo Kazooie games. Yeah, now. Uh, it's great to have the original like rare team back mm. on something like a 64 style platformer, and it's great to see them doing something that's not under the thumb of Microsoft. Because when <laughs> Microsoft bought out Rare, they're like, "Yeah, we're going to do something yep. cool with Rare." And then they made Xbox avatars, which was... Uh... Hey, Connect Sports was an admirable... <laughs> it actually was a pretty decent piece of software, actually. <laughs> well, on, on like the, the relative scale of Connect games, yeah. it's good, but, I mean, compared to everything else, it's Connect. And then you also have Bloodstain for the Symphony of the Night fans, and that audience has been catered to recently with a whole series of games like Ori in the Blind Forest. But it's still good to see the original developers making another attempt at that old franchise. Yeah, and certainly with Konami yeah. not putting money into console and PC games anymore, it's good yeah. to see them going to Kickstarter and really making something that people obviously want because it's mm. getting lots of money, which is good. A whole bunch of money. But enough looking back into the past. Let's look at what's on this week's episode, shall we? Yes. So our big review for this week is State of Decay. Yes. Yes. So we'll, you can look forward to that. Yeah. We'll also be bringing on the Old Game Plus kids to look at the old gaming advertisements of yesteryear. And we'll also be giving you a sneak peek into Battle of Arena Melbourne to gear up that old hype engine. And we've got something from you today as well. Yes. We will be reviewing Crypt of the Necrodancer. You know what? Let's get straight to it. Now Shane, do you like yourself a roguelike game? I do enjoy myself a roguelike game. Do you enjoy yourself a music rhythm game? Oh, I can, you know, jab into my guitar here and there. Well, may I introduce you then to a hybrid of the two genres, Crypts of the Necro Dancer, a rhythm-based roguelike. Which doesn't sound like it should work, does it? It's not a game that's like, I guess, normal in a sense. Like roguelike, you see custom dungeon crawler, yeah. music, you know, you've got your melds it, there it, with some gameplay, yeah, like res and stuff. Mm. But it's never been really explored too much until now. Yes, and you have your all the rogue elements, your random dungeons, so many enemies and weapons and skills to try and figure out on the fly, and yet you've got this rigid music rhythm. Mm. But I'd almost argue that the music element just makes this game break out from all the other roguelike titles. It oh, like adds another layer to, I guess, strategy. It's almost like, I guess, a turn-based strategy in a sense. Yeah. Like, you know, you have a specified like turn that you have to do movement on. It's rhythm but strategy, but roguelike, it all like melds together into this kind of nice And game. it makes it really hard too, considering you don't have time to sort of sit back and think. You have to move on the beat. Everyone, all the enemies move on the beat. But with that, it's kind of exploitable in a sense. Yeah. Because like you've got double speed, you can actually activate in like the settings. Yeah. Which then gives you double turns in a sense. So you can go for a slow song, I mean double the speed of it mm. up. So it's a lot faster, you've got a lot more turns. Any custom music also, you can break the game. Yeah. Because if your song ends, you fall to the next level. Yeah. But if you add a big song on, you but, can just yeah. explore and explore. But we should also highlight the, the original soundtrack in this game because it, it is true. spectacular. 1-1 one, one just jumping straight into oh, yeah. the world yeah. and it just like slow but almost like energetic. Yeah. It's great. It's pumping. It gets you into the mood of the mm. game immediately. And even just the, ry the rhythm elements, it's sort of like Guitar Hero Rock Band, you just end up getting into a nice flow, you get it into the zone, you just get into a trance and next thing you know you've been exploring these dungeons for like hours on end. That's one thing, like I actually tried playing it without music yeah. and I still got that rhythm. Mm. Like you could still get the, you know, one, two, three, just, four, it's, it's one. It's a metronome then, Yeah, it was it? like a metronome, which you can actually get without the like music itself. So it's really, really interesting. Yeah, so Crypto the Necro Dancer is a surprisingly good game. Mm. Like it's too genres that go that you don't expect to go together but do it's like ebony and ivory living together in perfect harmony don't jump don't jump very well done triangle 
Oh my god, I, this, this is so painful. Oh! What the fuck was that? What the fuck? So, Georgina, hey, how are you going? Hello, thanks for having me. I'm very well, thank you. Nice. So, <laughs> how many times had you seen Frozen before you got the role? Zero. Wow. I had not seen it, I, I which is terrible. I just, I, you know, I don't have kids and my, a lot of my friends have kids, but they're little babies. And so I it just hadn't, I hadn't seen it. And so when I got the audition, I was sort of starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing was, I was on my honeymoon on oh. an island when I got the audition. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to convince my brand new husband that we were going to watch Frozen on our honeymoon and he was going to play Anna in my audition. <laughs> and um, bless his heart, he did. One very um, understanding husband. Yes, mm. yes. And then at the end of the honeymoon, I found out I got it. So Wonderful. it was quite the wedding gift, I guess. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> so how d was he as Anna? Oh, he was good. Yeah. yeah, no, he has quite a good American accent. I think um, the producers were like, oh, Georgina married an, Austra uh, an American? I she married an Australian. <laughs> that, that, it confused them. So that's quite okay. funny. Can you sing? No, I'm not a very good singer, which makes me feel slightly like mm. a fraud. Um, I, I felt it the most when we went to the BC Children's Hospital mm. and we went in character, uh, dressed up to go see the kids and hang out mm. with them. And it was beautiful and it was an amazing experience. But there was one child who demanded I sing Let It Go. And I couldn't say no. And, mm. and everyone pulled out their cameras and it was a little bit... Um, mortifying because yeah I I just I wished I could live up to mm. you know Adina but wow. um, <laughs> it's a very hard thing to do. <laughs> Did you get sick of that dress? Um, I, I loved it like mm. I mean yeah you can't not and and also the dress gives you the character because I mean it's it's a very it's a very detailed dress there was it, there was something like eight parts to it the corset wow. was very you know, it was a corset, so it was constricting and, and it certainly changed the way I walked and held myself and that mm. in turn, I think, helped me find Elsa. So I had to be very grateful to the dress. But on the other hand, I was working <laughs> in the Vancouver forest yeah. in a basically a wedding gown. Um, and so it was getting caught on trees <laughs> and it was like insects were like flying and I <laughs> couldn't get them out. And then, yeah, and, and I just, we'd work in the mud and I'd get mud all the way up to my knees and oh. the, the costume department, they're, they're used to it because it's mm. Vancouver, but yeah. I just felt terrible because I had to clean, you know, all those layers of silk. And mm. it was, it, it was a whole, there's a, there is a team of people behind mm. that dress. Wow. It, it really, yeah. But it, I just felt special to get to wear it. It was great. So how would you use Elsa's frozen power in real life? Um, hmm. I would um, freeze the ice caps to stop global warming. That is a much better answer than I was thinking of, which involved ice cream. <laughs> or margaritas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. It's been lovely. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It was fun. <laughs> thank you. So if you're watching this episode new, Battle Arena Melbourne is on this weekend. We've been hyping it up for the past couple of weeks, but we haven't exactly gone into detail of what it is. So, Jason. Yeah, so we, we've, we have said BAM7 a lot. Hey, BAM7, it's great. Check it out. But I don't think we've covered what that means for people who don't know what BAM7 is. So, BAM7 is the Couch Warriors Major for the mm. year. So, every year, uh, the Couch Warriors group who organise fighting game tournaments and fighting game events, and it's what appropriate they run a couch, uh, yeah. They they organise BAM Seven, so it's the the, the it was one of the two Melbourne majors with um, like Shadowy Showdown, but now it's just Battle Arena Melbourne um, running this year, and 
it's absolutely huge, but it's also a good chance for new players to come into the scene as well. Mm. And what opportunities do they have to sort of try these otherwise rather technical high-level games? Well, and, and there is, so there's a, the, big, the big thing is there's a huge range. So even if you're a melee, like a, a Smash Brothers player, there's room mm. to play Smash Brothers. If you have dabbled in Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat's probably the big one though. Like being yeah. honest, like that's the one that a lot of people tend to play who aren't fighting game fans. So like. Uh, there'll be a lot of people there playing Mortal Kombat. There'll be a lot of casual setups for it as well. But this, the hard part is there's going to be a lot of people. So mm. we're talking probably three or four hundred people in the one venue. So it's a, like big numbers. But um, there'll be plenty of time, plenty of room to play Mortal Kombat if you're 18, of course. Of course. Uh, but I, I think I think the big thing that people need to come into is the idea that they're going to go up against these people. They're just going to get destroyed, and that's going to be the end of the conversation. No. Um, there's lots of people there who want you to learn just as well as they do because they want good people to play against. And there'll be also people of your skill level there as well. I think that's the thing that throws a lot of people off um, when they attend stuff like fighting game tournaments or like eSports tournaments mm. or stuff like that. Yeah, so like every time I've gone to previous Battle Arena Melbourne's, I've just been in awe of even the most basic level of like the so virtual fighter, you're dead or alive, but uh, fighters. Yeah, yeah, and so it, like it's, it's still really good yeah. in the sense that there is, there is a broad spectrum of games, so if you've played something in particular that you like, or even if you like, I like this kind of game, so I might try it out. But I mean, the big thing is, you can come down for casuals, just check it out. Yeah. You can also come down and just spectate, because there are some huge names coming down. Um, they've got Perfect Legend um, for the Mortal Kombat. They've got eight international Smash guests, I want to say, so that's a big deal. Plus, the, um, the Mortal Kombat is actually a qualifier for the, um, the, the Beast of the East, um, like Asian Mortal Kombat qualifier for EVO. So, it's absolutely huge from even just the spectator's point of view. And we're finally at the point now where people will go out of their way to come down and watch these kind of things. So for those of us, if you're interested, um, where can, where can so, they so go? So the best thing to do is go to couchwarriors.org.au, which is the Couch Warriors site. Um, check out the, the info there or check it out on Facebook, um, uh, the Couch Warriors Facebook page as well as the, the fighting game groups. And don't forget that New Game Plus will be streaming it on newgameplus.tv uh, TV, um, as well as Twitch TV forward slash New Game Plus TV. So there is no reason to miss out on some of the action. I think if you're a new player, it's going to be great. If you're an experienced hand, there's plenty of opportunities to get better. And hey, you can always watch us cast things, which is good. Welcome to Old Game Plus, and uh, our, our fans will know when we do our streams on Sunday nights on, on Twitch uh, that um, uh, we'll promote it with a, a picture of the game we're playing from a long time ago. And when we're searching for those pictures, sometimes we find ads uh, from a bygone era uh, that show how much things have changed. And they have changed, haven't they? Oh, <laughs> yes, well, well, we're missing a lot of trolling now, aren't we? Yes. yes so it's... back in the 90s, there was a lot of trolling. So. Things like this. Genesis does what Nintendo, which is probably the most famous troll that oh, people know. Playing words. Um, so Nintendo's slogans were like, now you're playing with power. Sega's were things like, um, you know, welcome to the next level. But then this started happening. And it just chain reacted after that, didn't it? Yeah, it's good stuff. So um, um, one of um, Sega's other slogans was to take this, to be this good takes ages, to be this good takes Sega. Sega being ages spelt backwards. And that led to some more trolling, didn't it? Well, I mean, I do love trolling and I love Commodore just as much. And this is this is probably where Commodore blew all of their money. Uh, a billboard outside uh, Sega's UK offices. Uh, yep. To be this good will take Sega ages for the <laughs> for the... For the little CD32, tremendous little console, by the way. Um, so that's an awesome troll. Um, but occasionally, the, did you go trolling a little bit uh, risque? Risque. So here, this is an ad for the 32X for the um, Sega Genesis. Mummy, what are those two Sega machines doing? And her answer is, they're making a arcade machine, dear. Yes, birds and the bees. That's, yes. how, that's how they're made in the factory. Um, <laughs> now, here's, here's one that Sega ran for the Saturn. I'm not entirely sure it'd get a run these days. No. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, <laughs> it ends with uh, uh, Head for Saturn. That was the, um, that was the slogan for there, uh, which really opened the door to another classic troll. A classic troll um, by PlayStation competing with the Saturn at the time. If you still want a Saturn, your head must be in Uranus. <laughs> Bum jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is nice kind of the start of Sony pushing the boundaries as well. Yeah, it's pretty tame for them. Um, <laughs> if we go back a few years also, we've got uh, Sega being a little bit So this bit is over in naughty. Europe. 
Yeah, over in Europe, yes. Uh, things are very different in Europe, I think, for America. Things are very the different. Boundaries are a bit further out. Um, the the harder you, the more you play, the harder it gets. Um, yeah. So and there's uh, also a Game Gear version with the best thing to do with your hands without. Going you won't blind. go blind, yes. Um, and for the kids, that's actually a joystick. Uh, we used to use a joystick instead of a game pad. Yeah, like but, a fight uh, stick. Yeah, so, uh, or fight stick, yes. Um, so now, but, uh, now Sony. So now Sony, we're over uh, in Europe with Sony. Now they, Sony they really Europe. do push things. And uh, we, could, we could do 100 episodes of Sony's dodgy ads. <laughs> so let's start are, with, these are some of the best. <laughs> let's start with this one. So this is their ad for the PlayStation Vita, which you had a back touchpad and front buttons, of course. So, yes, touch both sides for added enjoyment. And uh, let's and. just <laughs> let's just move on to outright racism. Uh, here's one for the PSP. Uh, now it comes in white. Uh, so yes, less said the better, I think. Um, but look, uh, uh, if you've got any others you you remember, uh, join us on our Twitch stream on Sunday nights after eight o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, yeah. Send us some, send us some other ads you've seen which might be pushing the boundaries or a little bit amusing, great trolls because we'd love to see them. Because there's a lot of them out there. Now, if you like any type of fighting game, BAM has got it. Pretty much everything there. Yeah, I think it's that was less the oh, highlights were a little more like an encyclopedia of every fighting game. The only yeah. thing that is missing is the fisty cuffs from Witch Two. Ah, <laughs> that is the fighting game that I would get. And I'd argue, given it's, it is The Witcher, so it's probably more complex than any Street Fighter or <laughs> Virtual Fighter fighting moves. Yes, t totally. But um, yeah, certainly getting back into yeah. like some of the old Street Fighters and. Uh, I've been playing a bit of Mortal Kombat recently yeah. as well. I've been having a lot of fun with it. So yeah. if you were to play any of those fighters, like compete in them, what would you choose? None of them because I absolutely suck at all fighting games. But the closest one I could approach is Smash Brothers. And it's good to see the Smash community just burgeoning and growing just more and more over the years. Just catalyzed by the recent release of Smash Brothers for Wii U. But not to mention the melee community, which is just continuing to be as strong as ever. Yeah, and bringing in all those international guests as well. It's good Certainly. to have like the, the top players because if you've got a competitive scene that doesn't have the strongest of players, the, mm. the scene's not going to get stronger. It's only going to be as strong as it is. So having those international guests come in is great for the scene. Yeah, and at the very least, it's going to teach us low lives some new moves, something to aspire to, mayhaps. Now I'm here to review a game that 
is a remake uh, of a game from a couple of years ago. It's State of Decay Year One Edition, and it's for the Xbox One. So originally the game came out on 360 and PC, and it was it's an interesting take on that zombie style game. Like we all know, her, her, zombie games great because they really have become the first person shooter of the current era. But uh, to be fair, State of Decay does a lot of things that are very, very cool. It borrows a lot of elements and manages to make it work. So you have a lot of the time and resource management elements from Dead Rising, for example. Um, you've got permadeath. You've got um, you know, basic um, uh, like map, like a, a wide open uh, free roaming map that doesn't load. But when it loads, it takes ages. But when it, after that, you don't load again. So it takes a lot of these elements from other games, combines them into one, and turns it into this zombie game. And yeah, I know, like, you know that I really don't like zombie games, but there's just something about State of Decay that works for me. Yeah, it's a bit buggy, and, like, it's really a bit buggy, but if you take into account how much of the world this thing is rendering at the same time, and how much it tries to do, I'm willing to forgive it on that basis, because it is, it is just so expansive, and it's trying to do so much that there's going to be frayed edges. And unlike, say, something like an Assassin's Creed, where it's a little bit, I don't know, a little bit of a different thing, it, this is... I, I look, I'm, all I'll say is I'm willing to let it go. The, the gameplay itself is third person. So you run around, you've got a, usually a melee weapon and a gun. Um, you carry your own food. But you have to take into account people's encumbrances. You have to take into account their cardio. So as you play the game, you'll level up each character. But then if they die, you lose them. And you have to kill them to get their, your stuff back and things like that. So there's all of these really unique intricate elements to a game that looks like it's just another popcorn zombie game. But the big thing with the new one is it has both the DLC packs uh, included in it as well. Plus you get like, you know, uh, like a special car pack and a special person. And so that's the kind of stuff that I don't like so much about these kind of things. But I think the question you have to ask yourself is whether you're going to enjoy a game like this. Now, you can think of it like a Resident Evil in the sense that, you know, Resident Evil is obviously walk through a corridor, kill some zombies, backtrack across a map, backtrack to here, do this, do that, solve a puzzle. It's not like that. Um, you could think of it like a Fallout where it's like lots of little items to pick up um, and, you know, like a, a vast, expansive wasteland with lots of little stories here and there. And it's not quite like that either, though it shares a lot more similarities. What it does is just, it really is probably one of the best examples of taking all of these different genres and putting it into the thing. Probably the biggest thing I can say to its credit is the fact that it's one of the few games in recent memory, besides maybe Sleepy Dogs, that made me say, oh, it's okay, I'll just do this next little bit, uh, and then that'll be enough, and then I'll go to bed. And then you look at your, your, like your, your watch or your clock, and it's 4.30, and you go... Yeah, no, I, I'm definitely enjoying this more than I thought I would. Well, there hasn't been too many zombie games this year. Well, and it's... Let, let's go down the list, Sal. We've got um, Wolfenstein the Old Blood, which is Nazi zombies. Mm. We've had Dying Light, which is parkour zombies. <laughs> We've had yes. Resident Evil Revelations 2, parts one, episodes 1 through 5, well, which I... is episodic zombies. <laughs> We've, We've got Day Z, which is H and H1Z1. Uh, We've got yeah, Killing Floor 2, which is on early access. But even Can then... I borrow some of your fingers for this? <laughs> Even then, <laughs> I, it just feels like there's less of it because in the previous years, there's yeah. been just so many zombie games and I suppose but this year there are a few It's a zombie games. renaissance, if you will. Uh, yeah. Resurrection of the zombie genre. Yes. But, but, but at the same time, I get where you're coming from because it's not being jammed all over pop culture. As yeah. in, not everyone's making a gosh darn zombie joke at every opportunity. It's yeah. become just old hat. It's become part of the um, wallpaper, if you will. And they're different games as well. Yeah. Like H1Z1 is a really fresh take on this. Like it's an MMO zombie the, game. The, and the horror survival genre, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's a lot of fun to play as well. Uh, just having those big multiplayer games and then all of a sudden they all shriek down yeah. uh, and and you like the last few humans left when the gas starts encroaching yep. on the, it, it's it's a lot of fun and these games mm. certainly show that there's a lot more to be done with the zombies than just shooting them <laughs> although we can still shoot zombies that is still always oodles of fun yes but i like to occasionally parkour over my zombies because <laughs> allow me my mirror's edge dream shall we yes and that was the best thing about that game. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, as soon as it went indoors, it went downhill from there, unfortunately. But yeah. uh, enough of reminiscing about zombies. I think and the old days. Yes. I think we should wrap it up for this yep. week. So visit our website, www.newgameplus.tv. Like us on Facebook at New Game Plus TV. Follow our Twitter and Instagram at New Game Plus TV. And follow us on YouTube and Twitch. We're also at New Game Plus TV. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Tim. We'll see you guys next week.